What's going on everybody, it's Tilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to show you everything that you need to know to get an augmented reality experience with the Lightship ARDK, which is gonna allow you to do a lot of cool things with augmented reality. And specifically, we're going to be looking at how to set up a project in Unity. There's gonna be a lot of settings that you need to check in order for you to deploy to Android, to deploy to iOS. And I'm gonna walk you through some of those settings. I'm also gonna show you what the AR session is, what the AR session manager is, how you can do plane detection, how you can use some of the mock-up tools available within Unity. So let's go ahead and jump into my computer and start working on it. All right guys, so the first thing that I want you guys to do is go into Lightship.dev account. Make sure you create an account and you log in. Once you log in, you're gonna get to this dashboard here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new app key, which is going to give us a license. So I'll just do Dilmer YouTube videos. I already had one for Dilmer prototypes, so you can have as many as you need, depending on the app that you're building. And then click on create. Once you do that, it's gonna give you a long number. We can just click on copy and I'll keep that on my keyboard because we're gonna need that in Unity. So we'll start with the ARDK. And while that is downloading, make sure that you have Unity 2020.3.21F1, also either Android or iOS components. I am going to be using both because I want you guys to be able to test with different devices. In my case, I'm gonna be using iOS and also Android. So I have an iPhone 13 Pro and also a Google Pixel that we're gonna be using. And then just click on import to import the ARDK components. And the next download that we're gonna do is also the ARDK examples. Okay, so it looks so we got everything imported. The next thing that I'll have you do, let's go ahead and create a new folder because we're gonna need to put our license key. So I'll just call it, I'll put it into resources and then double click on that folder and then create another folder. It's going to be called ARDK. And the reason that I'm doing this is because iOS is looking for this. At least I got an error when I didn't have that in that specific directory. Then just click on ARDK auth config and then we're just gonna be adding our license key here and then hit enter to paste it. This is gonna give us access to be able to use the ARDK components. Once you do that, we can go ahead and delete the camera. I'm also going to go back on to the scenes folder. It's gonna be our first scene that we're gonna be using. So I'll just do ARDK hello world and then double click it. And then once you do that, go into file, build settings. We're gonna need it because we're gonna build it. So you need to add it to scenes and build. Make sure that you select your desired platform in here. If you don't have Android selected, you can click on switch and it'll switch it. So if you go to ARDK, you're gonna see that we have a lot of different folders in here. And this is basically the entire framework that we are getting from Lightship. So if you go down here, there's gonna be an extension folder. And this extension folder, it's going to contain a lot of things that we're gonna be using. So in our case, we need to go into prefabs and we're gonna be adding our new component, which is called the AR scene manager, drag it and drop it. Once you drag it and drop it, you're gonna start getting a couple of scripts in here. This is gonna be one of the managers, it's called the AR session manager, and it's going to control the life cycle of the augmented reality experiences that we're going to be creating, whether we need to start you know, the camera, whether the camera needs to start the session, and basically everything that has to do with you know, starting an AR app. And then it also has a capability checker, which is going to make sure that AR is supported on your device, whether that is iOS or Android. So then the next thing that you need to look at is some of the features that this, is, this has. I'm gonna leave everything by default, but you have the option in here to say whether you wanna use the Unity lifecycle, meaning that it's a gonna use the awake method, the start method. I'm gonna leave that as default because this is gonna work with Unity, so this is fine. I think if you don't wanna use this option, you can, you know, and you wanna control the life cycle, you can basically call into the air session yourself and then do all the hard work. I'm just gonna leave it like that because that it's going to work. And then everything in here should be fine. The next thing that I wanna do here is I'm going to be adding what's called, if you look for Android, this is so that we can basically request the camera from the Android device, the operating system. So when this app gets built and launched, it's gonna say, hey Android, can I get access to the camera? So for iOS, you won't have that issue because it works a little bit different. So just so you know that this is gonna be needed for Android only. So now that you have that, which is basically gonna give you AR awareness. We need to also add what's called a plane render because I need to start capturing and detecting planes. So you can either do it manually or we can use some of these extensions, which I, I prefer using the extensions. So we're gonna drag and drop the plane render in here. And this is basically the AR plane manager. I don't know why they call it the plane render, but that kind of makes sense. It's rendering planes, so that's why they did that. And then it has an AR plane manager script associated with it. It also has whether to use the Unity lifecycle or not. I'm going to say, 
yes. This one for some reason was not enabled by default. And it also has a plane prefab, which we're gonna be looking at in just a minute. And also detected planes. This is basically telling the ARDK what kind of planes we're gonna be detecting. Is it gonna be horizontal plane? Is it gonna be vertical planes? So let's search for mock-up and you're gonna see that as soon as you do that, you're gonna have a mock-up scene. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it in here and perhaps just make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. So the idea of a mock-up scene is that they are basically creating a mock-up of the real environment. And this is really helpful because you don't have to deploy to your device every time to be able to test it. Instead, you can use a mock-up environment. And I'm gonna show you how to set this up from scratch in a, in a future video. For now, we can just use this scene with these prefabs and this configuration. But in reality, you can just add a mock-up scene configurator. And if you look at some of these components in here, they also are gonna have mock-up plane anchors, basically creating a mock-up, which means that it's not a real thing. It's a mock-up made in 3D. So once you add the mock-up scene, there's gonna be one requirement in here that we need to add. And this layer, it's going to be required. So I'm just gonna call it AR Decay. And then it's gonna be mock world. And then if you go back into the mock-up scene, we can just go ahead and associate it to that. And then it's gonna say, do you wanna assign it to all children's? Yeah, we can just say all children's. So if you go and hit play, the planes are getting rendered if you look at the left wall. So in this case, it's gonna be a vertical, it's doing vertical planes, right? Because we're using, we're looking at the walls and the floors are also doing the horizontal plane detection. And you can kind of see here in the hierarchy that the planes are getting generated. And this is cool because you don't have to deploy it to be able to test it. You can just see it all in here. So what if we wanted to change this and only do the mock-up scene on certain axes? So if you wanted to do, let's say that we only wanted to do the walls, we can just change that to do vertical detected plane types. And if we get closer, you're gonna see, we don't see the floors getting planes but we're actually seeing the walls getting the planes, right? So that means that we only have our plane manager enabled to be able to detect walls, but no floors. And this is, you know, a use case in here will be if you wanted to do something on the wall, maybe mount a frame or I don't know, a graffiti or some kind that you want to do in AR, I think that will work. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a new object to do AR placement. So we can just do AR placement in here and then we can zero out the position. Then we're gonna be looking for AR heat tester. This is gonna be one of the components that are available as part of their examples. And then I'm also going to do AR cursor render. So this is gonna require that we pass in the camera so we can just expand this. It's gonna have the camera here just associated with that. And I'm also going to be doing the same thing on the AR cursor render. The heat type is going to be existing plane. We can leave that alone. The placement object, I think I'm gonna do for now, we can do, if we go to assets, there's a couple of cubes in here that we can use. So if we wanna place an object, we can say that like we're gonna place the blue one. We'll change that in a minute to a different component that is cooler. And then the cursor object, I'm gonna do also a cube here, which is going to be the, the actual green cube. Now we can make this a little bit smaller so that we don't have issues with running this on the mock-up scene. And then if you hit play, you're gonna see that now we're gonna start. So you're gonna see that there's a, there, there, there are rays that are basically getting generated. So if I go around, it's creating, it's doing a ray cast against the plane. And if I get closer, so you can use the your keyboard to be able to move. So if I go W, it's basically gonna move forward. If I go S, it'll go backwards, left and right. You basically can do that. And you can see that there's now, you know, I can do a ray cast and, and basically place the green cube. So this one is using the AR cursor render. So if I wanted to place uh, the actual cube, we can just basically left click and it's gonna place the, the blue cube. I can also do that, I can also do that. We can get closer in here. If you wanna be more precise, maybe we place one right there, one right there. And I think I can do just a Q to go down and E to go up. And that way we can kind of see. So let's go up a little bit more. And you can see that I can also place an object on the actual table. And you can see that the, the object was placed. And if we go back in here into the scene view, let me make sure that I do that. You're gonna see that there's a lot of rays getting generated from the, from the camera. They're generated, but they're also destroyed. So it looks like now that's the one that is currently active. But if I get closer, we can see. So this is something that, you know, with AR Foundation was really hard to do. But with, you know, ARDK, it looks like this is a lot easier to test because you don't have to build to the, to the actual device. So what if you wanted to place uh, something cooler, right? We can go ahead and grab, I think they have a jetty here that we can use that I think looks a lot cooler. And then if we go ahead and make this and actually hit play, we can, I think we can make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And you can see that I can place a jetty there. Perhaps let's get closer and place it in a place where it looks more realistic. And I'm just gonna go forward here and rotate my camera. You kind of see the jetty in there. There's a jetty right in the air. 
So in this case, it doesn't really make sense to add a jetty on the wall. So let's go ahead and go back here. And you can say, well, I, you know what? I don't want to support that feature, right? So we can disable the, the vertical and hit play. So this is how easy it is going to be to be able to test it. And then we can get closer and there's no way that I can put a jetty on the wall. But I can put a jetty right on the, you know, right on the table if I wanted to. So I think there's a jetty there. What if I wanted to put a jetty right, perhaps right over there. So left click and then we can go ahead and go back in here and look at our jetties and see how they are positioned. You know, do any kind of work that we wanted to do to be able to test our AR experience. I can put another one. Perhaps if we get closer, one right here. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you is what are some of the settings that you need to set up for Android. So I'm just going to go into build settings, make sure you have Android selected as a platform, and then go into player settings. So if you go in here, there's going to be a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. So we're going to be doing all these settings, but you want to make sure that you have your, your device, your Android device set up to developer mode so that you can also start developing and also make sure that you have the USB debugging enable so that we can you know, connect it to the computer and actually build it and deploy it to the device. In addition to that, we need to do a couple of changes in here. So if you go and scroll up the Volcam graphic API, we need to remove it. That is not going to be supported by the Android device that we're going to be using or, or any Android device that you're using right now. And OpenGL ES2 is going to be needed. And this is basically what they recommend that you use based on the documentation. So once you have those, we also need to change the, the scripting backend. It's going to be IL2 CPP. The API compatibility level is going to be set to 4.x and it looks like as soon as I do that the project is getting rebuilt so let's go ahead and go back into unity so the other change that we also need to make in here is I'm going to make sure that we have arm 64 I'm using a google pixel so this one is going to be required on the minimum API level, I think on the changes that I did, I did API level 24. So this is what they recommend the documentation to use is the Android 7.0 API level 24 and then automatic on the target API level. And these are all the changes that we need to do as far as like Android is concerned. So now if we go into iOS, I could go here and then make some of the changes. You can also make the changes right now and you know, make sure that you're running this on a Mac OS computer to be able to test it. But we can change, we can make the changes right now just to make sure that you know. So in the case of iOS, if you want to build to iOS, you would basically change the platform to iOS so you can go in here and switch it. I'm not going to build it to iOS just yet, so I'm just going to do some of the settings. The first thing that we're going to need here, it's going to be ARKit support. So if you go and scroll down, this is going to be require ARKit support, which is going to populate the camera usage description. We're also going to need the location usage description, and this is because they're using VPS and they're using location right now. So I'm just going to say this is for VPS usage. And VPS is part of their positioning system that they're currently working on. So, but if you don't do this, it's not going to work on iOS. At least it didn't work for me. So just basically get that going so that you don't have any issues. And then just like we did above it, we also need to change this to be the 4.0. So just do 4.x. And this is going to be the API compatibility level. Your bundle identifier is going to be important when you start building on iOS. So I'll show you that as well. OK, so the next thing that we need to do is basically just build it on Android. So I'm going to go into Android. If you click on Refresh, you're going to be able to see your device. We can click on Build, and we can just say Test, and then hit Save. OK, so it looks like everything seems to be working. So I'm just going to go ahead and move around. And you can see that the planes are getting generated. If I get closer to my computer here and perhaps get back a little bit, you're going to see how planes are getting generated. So what if we wanted to place in the character, the Jetty character? So I'm just going to go ahead and put it right there. And you can see the Jetty character getting generated just fine. We can probably place one right over there. And you can see that he gets generated just fine. So if I go ahead and place one right at the top of my computer, kind of see the jetty. Okay, so it looks like the ARDK build was created successfully. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Xcode project. So on the iOS version, we can also, you know, capture the planes. This tells me that everything is working. I can do wall detection. We can do vertical detection. My area is a little bit small, so you can see the jetty is right, you know, above me. Let's go ahead and place it right here. Okay, there we go. So we have another jetty in there. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any other questions about this, make sure that you let me know in the comments. And also make sure that you subscribe because that's going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. And the next videos are going to be coming in basically next week. So just make sure that you stay tuned for some of the new videos that I'm going to be doing with the Lightship ARDK, which I'm really excited about it. Thank you very much, guys.